What's up, Warpath? We are back with another video today. Today, we are going to be taking a look at light tanks. We're going to be talking about the pros, the cons and drawbacks, and ultimately what role light tanks can play in your army composition and how you guys can best utilize them. Welcome back, guys. All right, we are going to discuss light tanks today. We are going to get in depth with light tanks. We're going to talk about their pros, their cons, and drawbacks, and really how you can best utilize light tanks. And then if you guys are newer players and newer servers, or maybe you guys are looking to change your army composition a little bit and are trying to decide between a light tank and a medium slash main battle tank, uh, you know, this may help give you a little bit more in depth perspective on which which unit is going to be best for your play style. So when it comes to light tanks, they're fast mobile units. They're, they're, they're the fastest unit in the game. The only unit that's really comparable speed-wise is going to be the rocket launchers, uh, but the light tanks still outpace them um, in open field by a little bit. So they are the fastest unit in the game. They're highly mobile. Um, they are good for like guerrilla-style fighting and warfare and things like that. So if you guys are more of like the sneak behind enemy lines and target reserves, things like that, uh, the light tank is a really good option for you. And it also can double as a added addition for air defense, whether it's out in the field, you guys can have a mobile AA uh, option where you guys, if you guys find a fighter or maybe a pack of fighters, that's, uh, you know, the, the players that control those fighters are offline or just not paying attention, whatever the case is, you guys can drive your light tanks underneath them click over to AA mode, and then just have at it and rack up a bunch of basically free kills. You guys can also switch AA mode on when the light tank is garrisoned, and that can add as an extra form of air defense against enemy air units. So you've got your base AA gun, and then if you've got the light tank and you put it in AA mode, you've also got that targeting the air units from enemies as well. All right, let's talk about when it comes to light tanks, some of the pros and some of the ways that you guys can best utilize light tanks. And we touched on them just a minute ago, uh, but they are really fast units, right? They're fast units, they're mobile. You guys can get in and out of spaces pretty quick with these units unless you guys happen to get surrounded um, and run yourself into a bad situation. Pretty much you're always gonna be able to get out of a sticky situation with a light tank. If you guys, like I said, are one of those players that likes to roam around enemy territory, you like to play like more of a sneaky vibe, um, light tanks are great units. You guys can sit there and just basically, because everybody knows, I shouldn't say everybody, but we all in the back of our head that we, that the ones of us have been playing a while know we shouldn't stream reserves from our base, right? Meaning when I say stream reserves from our base, I mean that our unit, whatever unit we're using, um, Maybe it's in an army group. Maybe we're controlling it ourselves, but we've lost some units, not the whole thing, but we've lost some units and we're retraining it while part part of the unit is still out in the field. Those reserves leave our base and go to connect with the actual unit again. But when you do that with a light tank, they can come in, you can swoop in, you can start picking off, especially when you've got slower moving units like artillery, anti-tank guns, anything like that. When you've got slower units or weaker durability units like an artillery unit, like a rocket launch or things like that that are being streamed out of bases, you guys can actually rack up a lot of kills in a very quick amount of time because people just don't pay attention. They sit there and just hit retrain, 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 and it seems like it never dawns on them why their units keep dying and why their units never make it to them. And it's because they're sitting there streaming reserves and nobody paying attention to the fact that there is a light tank or a, maybe even a light tank army group sitting there patrolling in their, you know, uh, base area or their hive or whatever you want to call it, just sitting there picking off troops. And you guys, I've literally seen people in conquest events place top 30 in fighting machine and literally all they do, like they come out and openly say it, all they do is literally just roam around enemy territory picking off reserves the whole event. They don't really go head to head um, in combat with anybody they literally sit there and roam around with their light tanks and just hammer down on the reserve troops being streamed from their uh, alliance member bases so it is a really effective way to do it um, but it just has to kind of fit your playing style for me personally i don't have the patience to sit there and just you know roam around and go try to find a base that's happened to stream you know be streaming reserves out uh, that's not my style i'm more of a head up i want to face face to face fight 
uh, with you. But that's, again, it's just all personal preference. That's just my preference. Also, the light tank, like we touched on um, at the beginning of the video, is doubled as air defense too. Now, when it is modernized, so if you are in a server that is not um, eligible for modern units yet, or maybe you just have not modernized the light tank yet for whatever reason, um, when you are still using the legacy version of the light tank, you have to manually click between ground and air. Uh, but when it's modernized, it actually attacks both automatically. So you don't have to necessarily worry about it switching to ground mode to light mode. It will do it automatically and it can, it can still attack both units. Uh, so it does double as air defense. Now here is the thing. When it comes to the drawbacks of light tanks, this is where it kind of gets really dependent upon what play style that you actually enjoy utilizing in the game. Because with light tanks, number one, they are not good in head-to-head -head combat. They just are not really good in head-to-head -head combat. They're fast, they're mobile units, but they're pretty weak units. They lack a lot of durability. So if you're going to go head-to-head -head with a medium slash main battle tank unit, if you're going go to go to head-to-head -to -head with a super heavy, you're going to go head-to-head -head with a heavy tank, really anything um, along those lines, you can get, you can do okay against a tank hunter if you're going in terms of like an army group. Uh, but head to head, really, there's not a whole lot of options that the light tank can be in it in terms of a true head to head fight with a fully trained unit like a medium main battle tank, heavy tank, super heavy tank, because the mediums are fast, but they just lack so much in durability that it does hinder them in terms of true head to head combat. Um, also, another drawback is kind of playing off one of the positives, too, right? We've talked about air defense as, an, as, a, as a pro can actually double as a little bit of a con too. And not that it's going to hurt you, but it's just not going to necessarily help you, if that makes sense. Because when you guys are facing players, whether it's in the open field, whether it's your light, light tank is in AA mode and it's garrison, whatever the case may be, when you guys are facing players that have very strong Air Force units, whether it be fighters or bombers, but in this situation, especially bombers, because really the only reason that you would put your light tank in AA mode and place it in, in your garrison is because you want that added air defense in case there's a bombing run on you or something like that. But the thing is, is players that have very advanced Air Force units and very advanced Air Force tech, the light tank, even in AA mode and even the modernized version of the light tank, um, is just not strong enough to do hardly any damage to strong Air Force units. It's just not. Um, and that that is a little unfortunate, uh, but it's it's not enough to really make investing in the light tank worth it because it does little to no damage to stronger Air Force units or, stronger, uh, or, or players with stronger Air Force tech, uh, plain tech. So... It, it's a positive if you're if you're more early game and you're facing Air Force units that aren't necessarily very strong, but it is a pretty big drawback um, when you are in the later sections of the game and it's the Air Force units are just too strong for the light tank to really do much. Now maybe they you know release an update where they kind of buff up the um, AA capabilities of the light tank, but at least at the present time it's just not very effective against strong Air Force units. So the question is the question becomes. Should you invest the time and the energy into developing a light tank? And the answer is yes and no. And the reason it is yes and no is because it completely depends upon your play style and what you enjoy doing and the role you enjoy playing uh, for yourself and for your alliance. Like I said, for me personally, it is not worth the investment and it is not worth the time and investment in developing it because I am not the kind of person that has the patience or the focus to go and sit in enemy territory, hopefully find some bases that are streaming streaming reserves and and just target those. I like head to head fights. I like con. I like like the high action, you know, packed, um, you know, encounters, things like that. That's kind of my style of fighting. That's what I enjoy. Um, I like being in the thick of things. I don't necessarily like being kind of that sneaky uh, 007, you know, vibe where I can kind of creep around and, and do damage that way. But a lot of players are, and a lot of players really like that. Like I said, I've seen players and I've talked to players that have literally placed top 30 in fighting machine ranking and epic conquest events based solely off of using light tanks and just running around and sniping enemy reserves being streamed from bases. So it's entirely possible to be extremely and highly effective, uh, with light tanks 
And if that's your play style, yes, 100% invest in the light tank. If that is not your style, then I would say you probably ought to take a look at maybe looking at doing a medium slash main battle tank as that's going to give you still some speed, but it's going to give you the strength and the durability to go head to head with pretty much any other unit in terms of field fighting in the game. You can go head to head with, uh, you know, other main, medium main battle tanks. You can go head to head with heavies, head to head with super heavies. And then of course you can handle light tanks as well. So the medium slash main battle tank really is one of my favorite units. It's extremely versatile. And it really does offer a lot in the way of, um, you know, options and how you can play with it. So if you're really focused on the reserves and, and being that sneaky player, then 100% invest in the light tank. If you're not, I would definitely steer you towards the medium slash main battle tank. Uh, with that being said, guys, if you guys have stuck around to this point, I do really appreciate you guys. I hope this helps. We're going to do a uh, some more videos like this where we take a deep dive and look into the pros and cons and talk about if it's a unit worth investing in. In terms of all units from all camps, we're going to cover artillery, rockets, mediums, heavies, super heavies. So we're going to touch on them all um, in future videos. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Hopefully this will help make you guys make a little bit more informed uh, decisions in uh, the future when deciding which units to develop and, and prioritize um, and things like that. So if you guys did stick around uh, this long, you guys enjoyed the video, found the video helpful, please do go ahead and consider hitting the like button helps me out tremendously. If you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, please do consider hitting that subscribe button as well. And then if you guys also do want to show me in the channel uh, some support and some love, if you guys are interested in becoming members of the channel, the link to that is going to be below in the description of the video. Uh, that's going to be for $4.99 a month, but it comes with a lot of awesome perks. Um, you get badges, profile badges by your name and comments and live streams. We've got private Discord channels. We've got a whole host of benefits and perks that come from being a member of the channel. So if that interests you guys at all, all the money from memberships gets rolled and reinvested back into the channel, into equipment and things like that to be able to help me continue to improve my content. So with that being said, guys, I appreciate you and we will catch you guys on the next one.